Hello and welcome to this quick look at Markovnikov's rule. We're going to use one methyl cyclohexene and HBr because cyclic alkenes are often used in exam questions uh, to make it a bit more applied and challenging because they don't always use those types of alkenes in the typical examples in textbooks. So Markovnikov's rule is Basically, if an asymmetric alkene is react with the hydrogen halide, the hydrogen of the hydrogen halide attaches itself to the carbon atom of the carbon-carbon double bond, which is bonded to the greater number of hydrogen atoms and the smaller number of carbon atoms. <clears throat> Excuse me. So first of all, let's establish why one methyl cyclohexene is an asymmetric alkene. If you put a line of symmetry through the carbon-carbon double bond, and then pop the hydrogen on there so you can see that it's attached. Then clearly there's different groups on either side of the carbon-carbon double bond. Therefore, one methyl cyclohexene is asymmetric and Markovnikov's rule will apply to this compound. So thinking about the carbon atoms, the carbon atom on the left-hand side, which I'm pointing to on the double bond, is bonded to no hydrogen atoms and three carbon atoms. If we look at the one on the right hand side, that's bonded to one hydrogen atom and two carbon atoms. So this is the carbon atom which the H atom in the hydrogen halide will most likely attach to first. So let's take our hydrogen halide like HBr. Now don't forget, obviously, the hydrogen atom is less electronegative than bromine. So hydrogen gets the positive dipole and is positioned closer to the carbon-carbon double bond, not the other way around. Okay, so we've got the HBr with our hydrogen halide approaching. We put in the curly arrows that show the movement of electrons. And there's two possible carbocations that we could end up with. So removing the double bond on the carbocation um, templates there, we put in a carbon plus or a positive carbon atom. So each of those carbon atoms has only three bonds. Now there's two places you can put them on one or other side of what was previously the double bond. On the left-hand carbocation, there are two carbon atoms attached to C+, which is being highlighted right now. On the right-hand side, there's three carbon atoms attached to C+, which I'm highlighting again. So looking at carbocation stability, the tertiary carbocation is the most stable. He has one, two, three alkyl groups with carbon atoms attached directly to C+. The secondary has two carbon atoms attached to C+, and is slightly less stable. The least stable of all being the primary carbocation with only one carbon attached to C+. So on the far right hand side, the tertiary carbocation is obviously more stable. So let's start doing the mechanism. So we've got the bromide ion comes in and the lone pair in the bromide ion has a curly arrow drawn from it, starting between the two electrons and it points at the carbon atom that carries the positive charge. Do the same thing on the other side. And just to recap, on the left-hand side, it's a tertiary, sorry, <laughs> secondary carbocation so it's less stable and it's less likely to form. On the right-hand side, a tertiary carbocation, more stable, so more likely to form. So what's happening is in each carbocation, any nearby carbon atoms will tend to push electron density towards the carbon that carries the positive charge. So there's two carbon atoms or alkyl groups pushing electron density towards C plus on the left, but there's three carbon atoms or alkyl groups pushing electron density towards C plus on the right.
So if we think about the two different products that we're going to make, there's two different places the bromine could end up being attached. So your minor product is 2-bromomethylcyclohexane, and your major product is 1-bromomethylcyclohexane. You'll see that I've um, emphasized the ane part, because these are now halogenated or brominated cyclohexanes, not cyclohexene anymore. Okay, hopefully it's been a useful look at how Markovnikov rule uh, works and also how it's applied to cyclic alkenes. Thanks for listening as always. Until next time, see you soon.